Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to continue what we were talking about uh, yesterday, which was the notes. So let's get to it. Let's get to our clean stream right here. There we go. I feel like my camera is a little bit off center. Let me move it. Nope, too much. There we go. So uh, yesterday we were talking about the noise node and the uh, checker node and some of the utility nodes that we can use. Today I want to talk about the uh, ramp node. So the ramp node is uh, one of those nodes that's really, really, really helpful and you can do a lot of very interesting and cool things with them. So what the ramp will do is as follows. And actually I'm going to use a, I'm going to make a little exercise here for you. Let's say I want to model like a, like a beach ball. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select like the halves. I'm going to do like, like this line right here. And then uh, this line right here. And I'm going to say uh, mesh, edit mesh, uh, detach. So now those guys are like a, like a separate piece. You can see here and here. Let me isolate those. And I'm just going to extrude, control E to extrude. And I'm just going to extrude a little bit in like this. And then I'm going to select this guy right here. They're the same object still. I'm just splitting them to, to get a, like a different effect. And then I'm just going to extra this. So like that guy, that guy, control E and push them in. So now when I press number three and we are seeing both of them, it's going to be like a, like a cap. So that's a, that's actually a, a nice modeling trick. You don't have to do like a bevel and insert loop and a lot of other things. Like sometimes just doing that sort of like small overlap works very, very nicely. As long as you're not going to unassemble the, the whole thing. So now what I want to do is I want to um, uh, fill these faces of the object, not the caps, just these faces of the object with this sort of like beach ball, uh, beach ball, uh, yeah, beach ball um, pattern, just like like the strips of color, right? So I'm going to right click the faces, uh, add a new material, and I'm going to add a Lambert material. Actually, this changes to a, a blend material so that it uh, shines a little bit more. And then on the color, I'm going to connect one node that's called the ramp. And the ramp, it's um, a really, really powerful node because with the ramp, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to input a gradient going from whatever color you want. Right now, this is set to black and white, as you can see here, and we can see going from black all the way to white. This is going to obey your UV, by the way. So that's why it's, it's very important to have a proper UV. So as you can see here, the square is just very, very straight. It's, it's looking good. Um, so yeah, the, the ramp is going to map out a range of values in your object. Now what I can do here, again, just jumping into the ramp node, is I can change, for instance, instead of a B ramp, I'm going to use a U ramp. So now it's going from left to right, and I can add more points to the ramp. And by going into each individual color up here, I can change the color of, uh, of, the, of the points. For instance, this is going to be red, that's yellow, and this is uh, green, and then we're like to blue or something. There we go. So we can very easily create this procedurally generated rainbow uh, effect, rainbow color, and uh, create our nice little uh, beach wall. Now you can see here those faces that are looking very weird. That's because they don't have a UVs or the UVs are very bad, very wrong. Um, we could just unfold it and do something, but I'm just going to keep them like that. It kind of looks cool. So uh, the way the ramp works, again, we have different types of ramp, which is B ramp, vertical ramp, U ramp, horizontal ramp, diagonal ramp going, as you can see, from one corner to the other. Uh, radial ramp going from the center out. Uh, we have circular ramp going from the center out, but in like a circular fashion. Box ramp, uh, UV ramp, uh, which kind of like goes into sections. Uh, four corner ramp, where each color is going to be a different uh, corner, as you can see here. And finally, tartan ramp, which is this sort of like pattern stuff. Uh, usually V ramp and U ramp are the ones that you're going to use the most because uh, the UVs of your objects are going to be uh, aligned to one of those axes and uh, it's going to give you this sort of effect. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, how, how can we change this so that there's like solid objects? And it's actually very easy. I'm just going to push this guy here, here, here. And then this one, the last color, of course, has to be red so that it connects back to the, to the origin, right? Like you can see this very nice rainbow color now. Um, and if you want to have like a straight, uh, let's say a straight, uh, like bands of color, we can change the interpolation right now. We, this is a linear interpolation. So it's, it's transitioning in a linear way from one point to another. We can make it smooth and it's going to smooth everything out a little bit more. We can make exponential up or exponential down and it's going to change how things are going to be looking. Uh, but usually you're going to do linear smooth, or maybe sometimes like, I don't know, spike that looks interesting. Uh, but if you don't want to just change this to none, 
And by changing this to none, as you can see, uh, we're back to not having any sort of interpolation. Everything is just flowing from one color to the next one. Uh, and it's just a matter of like properly aligning these guys. So as you can see, we need to divide this into like five sections uh, so that we have four uh, sections over here. So just by moving these things along a little bit here and here, we should be able to properly find exactly where the where the halves are. So again, if you need to do a quick just color uh, ramp or something in, in the object, this is a perfectly valid way to do so. But that's not all. You know me, and I always like to show you some very cool tricks. So here's the cool trick about the ramp. Every single color of your ramp here has its own input. So on my selected color red, for instance, I could plug in something else, like a checker. And now what I'm gonna have is that section of my uh, sphere is gonna be a checker pattern. And as you can see, the element is going to start becoming a little bit more interesting, a little bit more intense. And that's not, again, the end of the, of the line. Like maybe I say, hey, you know what? Maybe I want this checker to be uh, red because red was the color that we had before with that nice little banding. Let's go back to our green channel. So I'm going to go to the ramp, to the green channel. And on the selected color, I'm also going to use a checker. And this checker, the color is going to be green. So now we have this very interesting uh, sphere that has uh, some dark squares in between the, the whole thing and maybe we can even go on the on the element and say hey why not go into the yellow channel and let's change the yellow channel and use a fractal which is a sort of noise so now as you can see what we're going to get here is the yellow is going to be replaced by this fractal noise which we can of course change modify oh my god uh, sorry about that. Change, modify, modify the frequency, the minimum, the maximum. Like there's a lot of things that we can change here, a little bit more contrast. And uh, of course, the color balance, if we were to go to the color gain, that's the main color. So that's the yellow. And maybe we say, hey, you, this, this is going to be like a, like a dark yellow, like a mustard kind of thing. And there we go. So as you can see now, our sphere with just one material and a lot of uh, procedural notes, it's creating a very interesting uh, effect where we're going to be able to, to well, create some <laughs> interesting elements here. Now, uh, I do think that right now the quality of the notes is not as good. Uh, however, I'm not sure if at the render time we're going to get a better render. Let me give it a shot. Yeah. So as you can see, at render time, everything is going to look a little bit better. And the reason is these notes are meant to be used by the Maya software and, and get us into this position. Which brings me to the next part, which is the fact that unfortunately, several of these uh, notes do not work with Arnold. So if I were to just uh, open our Arnold scene, let's do a, our typical sky dome here. Let's bring a, just a light here. Uh, what project am I in? My computer has been acting really weirdly as of late. It kind of forgets about the projects that I'm working on or something. So let's do just the decor shop, the one that we've been using before. This a very nice lighting scene. And uh, like technically, if we were to render this, I would expect this to be rendering in the way that uh, we want. However, some some notes might not render exactly like what. So just keep that in mind because I've had some issues where I'm trying to multiply or use some notes from Maya to drive certain aspects of the Arnold shaders and they don't work. And I, I think I can replicate that issue here with the um, with the hyper shade. So if I were to create, oh no. Okay, that's a very common error. Let's see, okay, it recovered. Sometimes the hyper shade just doesn't show. Usually closing and, and opening it up, up again uh, works. So if I were to create an AI standard um, surface, right, which is the, the typical material from, from Arnold, and I were to map our, our blin as well, here, and let's bring the, the AI, there we go. Technically, you should think, well, why not just bring this guy here and plug it into the base color and let's assign the AI external material to our uh, our sphere and uh, render, right? Like, technically that, that should work. The problem is um, that sometimes you're not gonna get the result. It, it, I, I can't seem to replicate it right now, but I was doing this exercise with some of my students last week and we couldn't get it to work. Uh, and my um, understanding is that certain notes from uh, from Maya won't work or won't yeah won't work nicely with with the AI standard surface. I was trying to use the noise node, I think. So let me try using the the noise. No, this is not it. So I'm just gonna hit tab and add a noise texture. There we go. And if I were to just plug this out color into the base color of the surface, you are gonna see it here on the on the hypershade, but I don't think we get it on the render, do we? Oh, we do. That's weird. 
again, I, I tried this last week and it, it wasn't working. However, if you ever encounter a situation where for some reason your uh, procedural noise is not working, uh, one of the cool things about Arnold and most uh, renders nowadays is they also have their utilities. So they also are gonna have their AI noise, for instance. And it's gonna work in a very similar fashion. It's just this AI nose, which has octaves, distortion, lacunarity, amplitude, scale. Uh, it's not as intuitive as the as the basic uh, noise from Maya, but it will do or serve the same purpose. So if I were to render this, you can see that now we have uh, noise, just like general noise uh, all over the scene. And I think we can change this over here. Let's try more like lacunarity, octaves. Let's modify some weird things here and there. Let's see if that gives us a, a different result. So yeah, there you go. So most of the renders, if you're using RenderMan, B-Ray, uh, Redshift or whatever, they must have or should have some sort of, uh, of procedural textures that you can use that are specific to that render. So if you ever have an issue where the Maya nodes are not working as you intend them or expect them to, just switch to the nodes from uh, the other elements. And uh, in this case, uh, talking about the ramp node, which is our, our main topic today, we also have an AI ramp. However, we have two. We have AI, AI, AI ramp float, which is gonna, gonna only gonna export one value, and AI ramp RGB. And the AI ramp is very similar. You're gonna have these guys right here, which have selected colors, so you can still plug a lot of stuff in here and uh, you can change the type, UV, diagonal, radial. So it's pretty much the same thing. You just need to know which one uh, which one of those uh, that's gonna, um, how each one of those is gonna behave with your specific scene, and that should give you a good result. So that's it, guys. That's the like the second part for, for this notes. If there's a specific note that you want me to explain or research, because as I mentioned, I'm not familiar with all of the notes. I've used several of them. But if there's one that, hey, I've seen this one mentioned and I don't know how to use it, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to, to research that for you. For now, I'm going to stop it right here. And uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, remember, it's the last day for the submission uh, for this week's uh, portfolio and picture review. So make sure to follow the link that's going to be down here in the description so that you can submit your work. However, tomorrow uh, on the Wednesday video, I'm also going to remember your, uh, remember, is that remember? No, I'm going to remind you. I'm going to remind you that uh, you have to that, that last day to submit. After that, I'll close submissions so that I can focus on the ones that have been submitted. And we're going to record one video where I give you some feedback tips and tricks for, for you to uh, improve. So that's it for me, guys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.